I am Doomsvitz, and this is day 40 of Spawn Year. This is easily one of the most visually stunning and exciting issues of Spawn I've read so far. Like so many of these, I don't know how much sense any of it makes, but there's a boldness and a sense of real urgency here that's been lacking much of the time. It probably helps that Spawn goes somewhere and tries to accomplish something. I know that, in and of itself, isn't cause for celebration with most comic books, but it is for Spawn. I can almost count on one hand the number of times he's done that, so I guess I'll throw myself a party! Last issue, some random ex-felon who, I guess, learned the true meaning of Christmas or something, was drafted as Heaven's Redeemer to kidnap Bobby and study him. Bobby, whose resurrection might cause some to question the true meaning of Easter. So, surprisingly, after his costume slightly reimagines itself and springs back to life, Spawn goes on a mission to Heaven's Embassy to get his friend back. While it's nice to see this sort of passionate response from Spawn, it's a little troubling that it's difficult to tell how much of this choice is Spawn's or his costumes. The handy narration boxes that understand all, except occasionally what narrative tense they want to be in, inform us that the costume needed a dramatic, emotional motivation to heal itself from the brutal injuries it suffered after Al slept with Angela in her miniseries. There is a price to pay for all wonderful things, I suppose. Bobby's kidnapping provides that motivation. Perhaps it's unfair to say that Al isn't really in control and it's really the costume calling the shots here, since it certainly is Al who has developed a relationships and feelings for his friends in the alley, and that his feelings translate to the costume through a symbiosis. Still, I hate that because Spawn has been so passive much of the time, I even have to wonder about this. Another thing I have to wonder about is why Cagliostro has to tell Spawn where the tallest building in the city is for some reason with a card that only reveals the address if he sufficiently controls his rage. I know this reference post-dates this material, but Cogliostro seems like a character out of Harry Potter more and more all the time. When we first saw the embassy, I thought perhaps it was invisible or humans perceived it as something else, but Spawn scales it and breaks right into Director Raphael's office in the middle of her meeting with God. Yes, really, God. This issue's got everything. But anyway, the building has a cross on it. How does Spawn not already suspect it has something to do with heaven? So here's a short synopsis that sounds hilarious out of context. Spawn bursts into heaven's New York embassy and holds God hostage to free a guy he's already resurrected once from the clutches of fiery celestial beings doing science experiments on him. If I ever get back to my life after Spawn year, I should get a job doing the write-ups on the backs of novels. Having no choice, because I guess Raphael really believes a spawn from hell can kill God just because he or she is in the form of an old lady, Raphael orders Bobby's release. Spawn battles Redeemer, the whole building falls down, and they teleport away. The old lady reveals at the end that she allowed Spawn to do what he did because his actions were in service of a greater good, helping his friend, even if it meant a demon from hell breaking the truce between the two sides by entering a neutral zone. I have expected her to say, stand down, red alert. So despite the ambiguity that's been established between the two sides, that neither seems especially noble or humane in its conduct, we get the sense here that at least the one in charge on the side of good is interested in peace, and also salvation for mankind, which she mentions. Spawn, overhearing that, asks himself if that includes the damned, like himself. So God cares about human souls, but is maybe bound by rules to allow some of them to be taken by hell. There are intriguing ideas hinted at here about the politics and bureaucracy of heaven, again referred to as a business. I wish I were more confident that these ideas will be fleshed out over the coming issues, but they're not inconsistent with what we've had before. But remember when I said I'm glad we haven't had any talk of a prophecy related to Spawn yet, even after all these impossible things no hell Spawn has ever done he keeps accidentally accomplishing? The old lady, God, says that Spawn is destined to be the one. My immediate reaction to that was a facepalm. I suppose the operative response is, whoa. 
So now I'm basically being told I'm supposed to care about Spawn because despite his indecisiveness, his lack of forethought, his gullibility, his whininess, and the fact that he's just not very bright, it's his destiny to be really important. So in 32 issues, with this revelation, we find we'd be in about the same place if Malbolgia had recruited a chimpanzee. A chimp would be loyal to his friends, and the suit would pick up on that too. A chimp would certainly have pressed that button on the side of Angela's death stick. I figure a chimp like Spawn would probably assume a little old lady was totally harmless even if she's on heaven's turf and clearly revered by all the deadly angels there. But I'm just drawing conclusions based on a reveal we've been obviously building up to, even if I find it a substitute for actual character building. All in all, this was a pretty strong issue, with a lot of atmosphere. Though maybe a little odd that God doesn't mind being held hostage as long as it's for a really good reason. Signed, Captain Logan. <laughs>